Hello and welcome back. So now we're ready to submit this new profile image and the text. Now I'm going to start with the text first here, and then we're going to deal with um, uh, yeah, I will start with the text here and then we'll deal with the image. So in order to save the text, it should be very easy to do because remember that our model should filter every information that we don't need, leave only what we need and then pass it on. So this information, you may want to, um, to verify this data. So let's deal with the verification process here. So, but before we do that, let's go directly to the user model, because this is the model that um, deals with what we have now. So, which is the user table. Now we need to add extra stuff here because we added an image. Um, otherwise, all this stuff will not be saved. Country, job, address, phone. So every uh, column that we add, every new column we add here must be added to the other side. So I'm just going to go to browse here for a second. And what I'll do is I'll grab the text from here. Uh, this is all the missing stuff up to here. I think the other stuff is there. And I will do this. And then what I'll do is select in between these guys and put a comma and put a actually do this put that comma that go back one step enter like that so that uh, we have something that works okay so row is there already date is there already let's remove that image is already there let's remove that so these others, company address, slug, I think we are good with those. So there we go. So anything that's not added here will not be allowed in the table. So that's something to keep in mind. And then uh, after we've done that, we need to create, <clears throat> let's go to the model.php. We do have an insert function, but we don't have an update function. So let's duplicate the insert function one time like that. And let's change that to update. And then we have the data, right? But we need an ID for this. That way we can grab an ID and know exactly. Otherwise, without the ID, we don't know which row to update. So let's leave it there. Let's remove unwanted columns. This remains as it is. And then let's create an update query. Now, this is how the insert query looks like, but update looks a little different. So the query should look something like this. Update, and then the table name. So in this case, it's users. And then we say set, and then we go through each column. So we say set first name, is equal to and then first name like that and then comma last name is equal to and then last name oh sorry I need a full colon there so as you can see this is what happens so you say set and then you put each column with its value and then comma another uh, column with its value and then you must specify where you want this update to occur so you say where ID is equal to, and then you add your ID. If you expect to only update one column, it's a good idea to say limit one. Uh, and in this case, we will be updating one thing at a time because we only have, we're only expecting one ID, but who knows, you may have something with similar ID. So let's leave out the limit one like that. You may have 10 columns with the same ID and you want to update them at one time. So. But this is the basic idea. So what we would do is let's replace things here. For example, update users and then set. Now users will replace with a generic table because we don't know what table we are going to be accessing. So I'll put 
concatenation there. So update this table and then set. And then from here on, we have to add to this query. We'll say dot equals because we are adding to it. So now I want a loop that is going to do this because I don't think we can do this using implode as we did here. So this is out definitely. So what we're going to do is loop and I'm going to do a for each loop here. And all I need is the keys really. So say keys, whatever keys I got from data, that's what I need as key and value. Now the key is always just, uh, <clears throat> I'll remove this. I just need the values. The keys are just zero, one, two, three. Are they? Oh yeah, those are the keys. So what I want to do is grab this and put it here. So what we want to add is something like first name, which in this case will be the key. So we don't know what key it is, but it will be a key. So dot, and then we'll put an equal sign followed by an equal sign. And then from the equal sign, we have this, and then the key name again. So from the equal sign, we have that. Let's close that and then add whatever the key is at that time. Let's concatenate some more. And we have a comma after that. So just the comma like this, and then the loop can repeat. So let's remove this, but we still have this where clause down here. So I'll remove all of this except for up to the where clause. The where clause doesn't need to loop because it's only one line. So we'll add it from after the loop finishes. So where clause over there. Mm -hmm. So it will be ID is equal to ID. That's how it will be. So let's leave a space just in case. So we'll have commas, 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 but we don't want a comma right before the where clause here, because as you can see, we, we don't put a comma there. This will cause a syntax error. So what we'll do is we'll trim the query. So we'll say query is equal to trim, a trimmed version of the query. And we specify what we are trimming, which is the comma. So any comma at the end of the sentence of the query before we add the where clause must be removed. Okay, good. This looks like uh, something. So this will say something like update users set, and then all the columns will loop through. We'll add that column and its counterpart and then a comma, and then we remove the commas where ID is equal to ID, and then we run that query using data here. So this can come out. We can delete these guys here. And that is it. <coughs> Excuse me. Goody. So now we have ID and data in the update function. So with this uh, function in mind, it becomes very easy now to make an update. Yeah, very easy. So let's go and see how that is done. If we go to controller and this is in the admin and we go to the profile section. So all we need to do here is check if something was posted and then uh, we should do this after this row has been reviewed. So we grab the row. Oh, actually, no, we update and then we read again after the update. Otherwise the information we'll be reading will be outdated. So, however, I think we should read first. So what I would do is I don't want to use this. So I'm just going to add row here as well, like this. So both this and this will be equal to that. That's how this works. So I just want this row to use within here because I need this to go to the view. So after we read from the row here, so we're going to ask the question if server. So I want to know when something was posted. So what I would do is I don't want to retype this. So I'm going to go to the sign up, copy this, come back and paste it there. Okay, so if something was posted, but we need to know if row is valid. So if post 
and row like this. If both are correct, we have a row and then something was posted. All we need to do is add to it. So now we're just going to say user and then uh, update and then put the post data like that. This is all we need to do. And then redirect to the very same page again. So we redirect so that we can reread the data and remove that thing that says page expired and stuff. So admin slash profile, that's where we are going back to. Okay, great. And this time we have an ID there. So whichever profile was being read from, let's put a slash and concatenate the ID. Goody, this is all we need to do for now. So I'm going to come back and refresh, click here, and let's see if we can change Mary to Mary one permanently. So I'm just going to save. So it's telling me too few arguments to the function, of course, too few arguments. That's because I didn't give it an ID here. So let's put the ID there. It requires two arguments. That's how we set it up. So again, I'll repeat and add a one. Maybe let me add a two. So it's very different and hit save. Again, invalid parameter number of bound variables do not match the tokens. So what this means is that in the query model function here, the update, the number of uh, items that I've supplied, the number of keys does not match the items that I have added here. And the reason is because the ID, if you remember, this ID is not part of data. So it's part of the query though. So which means I have added one extra variable that is not inside data. So what I need to do before I supply data here, I have to include the ID. So I'll say data ID is equal to whatever the ID is at the time. Now the number of variables in the query and in data are going to match. So that's the complaint there. So let's come back and try that again. Fingers crossed this time. Let's put a two there and let's hit save. Oopsie. Okay, so this doesn't work either. Still doesn't match. Okay, so when you get to this point, all you have to do is, what you need to do is let's show what's inside the query first. Okay, let's show the query. Duplicate this and let's show data as well. That way we can make a comparison. And then let's put die. Okay, there we go. Let's refresh the page. Let's see what we've got. That way we can combine. So as you can see, the query is nothing like we thought, but at least we have ID there and this is the information we are sending. So this is the problem. The query is not complete. So I'm going to remove all of this. And this is because here we are saying query equal to, we are not adding to it. So we should put a dot to add to it. Okay, now this is going to obviously work. And why is it zoomed in? I have no idea. So let's put it through there and let it, let's see it pass the exam. And there we go, everything has worked. And now Mary has a two as you can see from the profile there. Goody. So let's add some validation and upload the image as well. 